central question is, can the Union of India in this manner determine a uh, terminate that relationship that is constitutionally recognized in Article 370? Yeah, that, you, you, that was the argument earlier. So we have come to the next argument, which is the manner in which it is done. That's right. It's fraud accordingly. It's absolutely, absolutely. It's a fraud on the constitution itself, according to me. Say it's an executive act. I'll say 356 is executive. 367 definition is executive. These are all executive acts. Parliament came into the picture when the changes had already been done through executive acts. We're challenging that. The, as you argued, the process was wrong. Yes. Whatever was done. Yes. But that is the parliament did it. No, pa no parliament. No parliament accorded approval to the executive acts which unilaterally changed the constitution as it was applicable to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. That's the central question that your lordships will have to decide. Could Parliament have, could 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 the Union of India have done it? So is it your case that the Parliament could have done it? No, not at all. Well, let me. That also I will answer. Well, let's kindly see. Ultimately, that was this was a political decision taken in the context of the situation then prevailing, right? And the complete abrogation of Article 370 must also be a political decision. Well, as your lordships will remember Brexit, what happened? In Brexit, what happened? There was no constitutional provision seeking a re referendum. But when you want to sever a relationship which has been entered into, you must ultimately seek the opinion of the people. Because people are central to this decision, not the Union of India. It's, it goes counter to the very grain of Article 370. But Mr. Vibble, in a constitutional democracy, seeking the opinion of the people has to be through established institutions. Agree. Right? In, so long as a democracy exists, as it does in terms of a constitutional democracy, yeah. any recourse to the will of the people has to be expressed and sought in terms of established institutions. I agree. So There's either, question, you, do it, so either you, cannot, you do it, either you do it. You cannot problem. envisage therefore a situation like a Brexit, a Brexit type referendum. Yeah. That's a political decision which was taken by the then government. Yes. But within a constitution like ours, there's no question of a referendum. But well, this is a political decision that they have taken by uh, unilaterally Miller's through an executive order, changing definitions. This is not this is not some constitutional decision. That's what your lordships. Supposing your lordships were to say that they can change the definition, or your lordships were to say. But the, therefore, against, the ultimate question is whether the con, whether the constitution does or does not interest that authority. That's correct. That's all that I'm asking. Well, I'm not asking for anything more. And which in turn depends on whether 370 is construed as as you say a permanent feature, irrespective of the terminology used, because that is in the context of the changes uh, till the constituent assembly was there or is it something which is capable of being well let's let me that's a much that's a much higher level malas to which you, i'm not in fact arguing that today malas whether it is permanent or it is temporary let's forget about it the central question is can the union of india in this manner determine a uh, terminate that relationship that is constitutionally recognized in article 370 you understand it may not be yeah. permanent that's I, it may be permanent it may not be you may change it you may uh, uh, you I may have in the context pleasure. that you you that was the argument earlier so we have come to the next argument which is the manner in which it is done that's right it's fraud accordingly it's absolutely absolutely it's a fraud on the constitution itself according to me it is politically motivated. It is a political act. These executive orders are political acts. They are not constitutional acts. That's my submission. And well, whether it is a permanent feature or a temporary feature is really at the moment not an issue. The reason why it's not an issue is maybe there is a constitutional way of doing this. I'm not addressing that. Nor have they resorted to that constitutional methodology. If they resort to it, it will be tested in a court. And on the process, you said last time that, you know, first, the section 92 power was vested in the governor, yeah. independent of the council of ministers. Yeah. Step 36, two, 38. Uh, right. Uh, step, and two, right. step two, the legislative assembly is dissolved by the governor under section 53 without aid and advice. Yeah. 
three the proclamation is issued under article 356 yeah. you said that the object of the proclamation under 356 to eventually restore democracy yeah, that's right and not the decimation of democracy right. and then finally we saw the amendment of article 3 in yeah. the presidential notification that's right that's so also an executive these, right. all these four steps according to you were constitutionally flawed there was no provision for these four steps because yeah. you've essentially taken away the powers of the uh, state assembly and exercise them under the garb of 356. That's the, that's the submission. That's right. Absolutely. I'm deeply obliged to your lordship. But I just want to read one other. Only little... one last thing which I wanted to ask you. You've made your, you made your point on the process which was followed. They will have to answer it. Uh, on, the, uh, on, on the proviso to clause 3 of 370, is there something ultimately that happened in the Constituent Assembly which sheds light on which way the Constituent Assembly was inclined to go? Yes. Because we are reading individual speeches. What happens thereafter at the end of this process well, in 1957? The, the constitution was adopted in 1957. Yes. By the legislature of Jammu and Kashmir. Between 1951 and 1957, they could have determined, determined or terminated the, the essence of Article 370, abrogated it themselves and said, we don't want, there's no need for this constitution. We want to be a state, a part of India, like any other state. That was that is why 370 sub article 3 referred to the decision of the constituent assembly. That decision could have been taken. But my Lord asked me the question, well, now that there is no constituent assembly, how will this happen? If it were, if it, if it were deemed to be a temporary provision, that's what my Lord put to me. Right? So your argument would be really, I mean, if you are, uh, if I can put it that way, that the proceedings in the constituent assembly of the state of Jammu and Kashmir would indicate a reaffirmation of the arrangement yeah. under Article 370 as a long-term arrangement. That's right. So that a the three options that Sheikh Abdullah spoke about, namely either of joining Pakistan, yeah. acceding to India, or remaining independent, they gave up the first and the third option. That's correct. They decide that the the of the, the, uh, the ultimate decision was to stay within the dominion of India, but subject to the safeguards of 370. That's right. And therefore, according to you, 370 assumes a permanent character, irrespective of the nature of the provision which is envisaged in the Indian constitution. And that's what Sheikh Abdullah said in his speech that, look, if this relation... That still begs one question yeah. as to whether it was enough that the Jammu and Kashmir legislative constituent assembly proceeded on that basis. Put 370, which was envisaged to be a temporary provision, be converted into a permanent provision merely by the proceedings of the JNK assembly or was there some further act required from the Indian constitution either in the form of a constitutional amendment well, by virtue of which 370 would cease to have a temporary character but have a permanent character in implementation of the wishes of the Jammu and Kashmir constituent assembly. But the government of India never expressed a contrary opinion throughout. But didn't it have to take place through a process of amending the Indian constitution itself? No. To for convert the, reason, the character of 370. Mother, let, let, all right. Mother, now your lordships are again going back on the issue of temporary nature. That temporary nature is a is a is a is not is not part of the Article 370. It's not part of a it's a it's a it's a it's it's not a part of 370, mother. 